Hello everybody and welcome to today's talk of the day. They call me an artist. We're a bit late because we have a, a little change. Um, as you can see, I'm not Liba Yazi, but we have her here behind me because she's sick, she can't attend. But we've tried to establish a Skype connection so she can speak to you and then afterwards we'll have Ramzi Magdizi here from Palestine to give you the second half of the talk of the day. Enjoy. Liba, please. Hello, um, uh, thank you for the opportunity to be with you, uh, especially that I'm sick and I couldn't really take the train and I felt so sad and disappointed that I was not physically with the, with the group and with the audience, but I'm so glad that it worked technically. So yeah, I'm looking forward for the talk. Liva, I think we are waiting just for your statement to they call me an artist. Yes, now I hear you. Okay, fine. I think we're just waiting for your statement for the talk of the day, so please just carry on. Yeah, um, I just, um, I have the, I have these uh, questions actually about being an artist in this, uh, in, in conflict times and starting from 2011, I turned to be um, a Syrian artist, a female Syrian artist immediately from being an artist, normally just an artist. So I guess this is really, uh, a kind of uh, a mission and a burden at the same time that I also would like to to start the discussion with how you all of a sudden turn to be a female, you know, and then the nation, Syrian artist, and then in exile. So I guess this is really to start the discussion about how you turn all of a sudden from just being concerned about the content of your work to being an ambassador or a missionary of a cause. So I, yeah, and this is you know the, the the main this is the main transformation that has to do with politics and art. All of a sudden, that happens in, for example, in a, in a career. Yeah, I don't know if you hear me because I. We can hear you, but we can't really have a proper dialogue because the sound quality doesn't allow that. Uh, ah, okay. Okay, so we just ca you just carry on with your questions. We can't just have a proper dialogue, but we would like to hear your um, yeah your ideas about this change in position that you've all of a sudden felt. Yeah, so I will just say some notes about, um, and then maybe I can hear you if you um, if you carry on the discussion. So I can just hear from from my from my place here is that. Yeah, from that moment, I really I had a, a redefinition of the of of what does it mean to be an artist because now I'm not um, I'm not just an artist as I used to be, and then my content really and my uh, identification and how people receive me, or the reception and um, the, the production was affected by politics in a in a very um, severe and acute way. So this experience really raised a lot of questions about the content about. The, the identity and about to whom I am to whom I am writing or to whom I am doing art, because it used to be um, taking the situation in Syria. It used to be very local and very um, moving in the Arab world, uh, taking taking the conditions of Syria cultural scene as being closed for a, for a good while with the dictatorship. So and then all of a sudden the, the my. Which language I use is a question. To whom I'm writing, to whom I'm doing that is a question. Is it, does it really represent Syria at this moment? So I turn to be from an artist to a representative. So these questions really I, I, I started to, to live with rather than I, I don't have answers immediately. I really am living this experience. And added to that is the expectation of the other from me. So am I as a Syrian artist allowed to talk about a love story or I'm only always representing a cause. So all these questions that I have in mind is that, can I, for example, now being a Syrian artist, female Syrian artist living in Germany, um, how would I be received? It is not the same as I used to be in Syria, as a, just as an artist writing about, let's say, an absurd play or writing poetry. Now everything I do is under an umbrella of definitions. Do I have the, um, the, the, the experience enough to talk about the host community I am in? This is a question. 
the chances the Syrian artists are getting is also a question. Is it a matter of sympathy or a matter of quality? So all these questions about the, the allocation. Now I'm changing my location, changing my audience, changing the language, and then that means I'm also changing. This is a question, am I changing the purpose? And how am I received in the, in the new communities? I really would like to, to start the discussion and see what are expected you know, from, from Syrian artists here. And I, as I, maybe as we um, exchanged in the notes before, I still believe that it's too early to come back, to come with answers. I, uh, I feel it's always now a, a human experience to get to the answers. And I believe that what is happening is challenging and it raises questions and conflict and I do believe that conflict is a very healthy um, situation. I don't think that reaching a very neutral and dull um, zone is that what we are looking for. I think no, the conflict that comes up with uh, innovative answers is what I believe is worth the, the experience. Okay, uh, this subject I think it's really huge once we ask somebody, as the Occidental they call us, from the Middle East about how to present yourself or who you are. From my point of view, I think the problem as artists, we are not seen first of all as artists. We are seen with our color or with our history. And this is as, as a filmmaker and actor, I start uh, discussing everything from here because I have no project. I was like in Europe or US, I worked, they did not call me because who I am as an artist. I think first of all, they, they called me because I'm Palestinian and I look how you see and I can have very tough face, but I really just finished a comedy film. <laughs> yes. I can be, I think actors, basically and actresses, their job is to adapt themselves according to the character uh, people they ask you to do. In my experience now, unfortunately, I will tell you about when I played Martin Luther King, they tried to convince me that I look like him. I did not see that. But finally, yes. When I put 15 kilograms more, okay, I had something on him, and after watching the whole videos on YouTube, I could see that. Why we did Martin Luther King? As Palestinian, we live under occupation since 70 years ago, so we have if the Syrian they live since 2011, then I have been like all the time and my father and my grandfather living with the same situation. So as actor, I never had the chance to not have this stigma on me that people want to work with me as Palestinian, first of all. Or they don't want to work with me because I'm Palestinian. Actually, this is more happening sometimes. Yeah. So. When we did Martin Luther King, why we have done Martin Luther King with the Palestinian National Theater? Because the American Cultural Center in Jerusalem, they wanted to support the National Theater, but with conditions. They proposed four scripts, and the artistic director has to choose one. This is how it was. Later on, we did the play. It was a play inside the play. So there is the improvisation, and there is the play as Martin. So I was playing two characters. In the improvising, when they assassinate Kennedy, uh, some of, of us, we decided or we told that we should put the American flag on, on the coffin. And some of us, 
for the long history, as you know, I think, or you can imagine of US, some of us said no, as improvisation. The first day we opened the play and the uh, American consul came, you could not believe. They said, you should take this off, you should put the American flag. We didn't do that. After on, now if you apply as a Palestinian for the American to get any fund, you should put on the poster, not the name of US, the flag. I'm not kidding. Google it. You can Google it. So I wanted to start from here because I think art and artist or whatever, we should be the most uh, flying people. <laughs> we should be like out of the siege, out of the walls, out. But this is not true, actually, what, how, how it's happening in the world. And this is related to, as my own experience, how now art, the art scene everywhere, as I see, I worked in Europe, in, in US, and in Palestine. I think we are all in the same point, like we are trying, not all, all most of us, we are trying to produce art according to what we are watching on TV. And here we are falling. I have seen a lot of things about Syria, but it was, it was not enough at least how to express what are people living there. So this is the question, like the need or why we need to work about this. And if we have just to take all the tragical stories every time happening, I think there is the question. I, I can talk a lot, much more, but I would like to share with you because this is my point about talking about, uh, about all this stuff. No questions. I can tell you about, for example, no problem. I can tell you, for example, because I'm an actor, <clears throat> when I go to do a casting, I have very cold style. You want to call it minimum, minimalist, or whatever. So I don't have this way of shouting, or, oh, or, oh, oh. When I do the casting, usually, with European, and I'm not talking, I'm not journalizing, they are surprised. They say like, oh, you can raise up your voice. You're not shouting. Arabs, you shout. This is, yes, this is how they start. This is how they start. My latest film was in Morocco, and I had to shout. And I found it really like very difficult. Even like the Moroccan, they said, but why, you are doing well. Why you cannot shout? I said, because I don't see it. I can do it in a in, in different way, for example. Because why we have to, to think about the stereotype of a person who is he's angry, for example. So I think we got wrong from thinking about the story sometimes and the need of the content of the story, why we have to do it. And after, about how we can work about the characters. Just if we think about uh, hallowed, how they present Arabs, how they present Arabs. They wear dishdasha, uh, the white, and they put uh, on the head. Do you know that in the Middle East, nobody dressed like that? <laughs> yes, absolutely. You can watch uh, the body as an example. Bad film, but watch it. Everybody dressing the same. This is how people in the Arab Gulf they dress, actually. But this is the marketing behind many projects. The stereotype. How we can just see this society. Uh, the funny things with how I look, and because I talk Spanish. In, fa in Paris, when I work, a lot of people, they think that I'm Spanish. And Spain, they think that I'm French because sometimes I have this accent when I talk Spanish. What I want to say that sometimes people, even I have this face, like sometimes you cannot maybe recognize from where I am, or if you hear me talking in Spanish, so you will, you will accept that I'm Spanish. I, I, I don't know if I reached 
point that I think we should be more specific, maybe, about how to create a character and how this character could be in an alternative and artistic way to present a story, especially if you decide to do a story, it's not about your country, which is so risky. My best film, or one of my best films I participate, it was a French film, and the director, he's young, his first feature film, he took me, for sure, because I'm Palestinian and his friend, and the story, it's about the First World War. And the idea was a refugee from Palestine goes to France and he try to make his life there. You will never listen about from where he comes, but during the film, hearing the dialogues with the puppet I had, you can understand that this person comes from a hard place. And my question was, why you don't want to say from where I come? Because I was surprised, because everybody wants that. It's so sexy to be Palestinian, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it's so sexy. And he said, because now, Palestine, or since 70 years ago, you are under occupation, but in the future, there is a new story, there is other people. So I want to do a film for everybody can face this situation. And this is great. <laughs> thank you, know? you so much, Liva, and thank you so much, Ramzi. Um, in the afternoon, we continue this uh, talk about all these questions we got now very briefly. We go deeper in in the panel, um, what's in our power. There you can meet again Ramzi. And it's a short intro in our afternoon subjects. Have a lunch break, and we see you again in the afternoon. Thank you. Sorry, I just would like to add something, because there is, I think there is a lot of directors, producers, really, like, I don't want to say about what I said, it's important, but try to think about it. I will tell you something, in Palestine we have no money for art, absolutely. All what we do, it's co-production with Europe, and there it's controlled. So just try, if you really want to produce any piece of, not even Palestine, any, any way, any, any place in the world, just think about really that let's forget what we hear in the TV because they try to make like manipulation. And try just to think and look on a specific uh, subject and specific characters, how you can tell this story because there is many ways and there is a lot of people in, in the Middle East, they really can do a lot of things that in, in Europe or in, in US, they don't think that people can arrive to this point. Two years, last year, the best actor was in Venice was a Palestinian actor called Kamil Basha. And he did a story uh, uh, in a Lebanese film. It was about Palestine, but he won the best actor in Venice Film Festival. So what I want to say, that always there is somebody can do much more than what we think about what we and how we get uh, info about a society or a country. And thank you. <laughs>